Good evening all and welcome. A few things before today's videos begin. The most obvious one being, I have new merch. Yay, there it is. And you know what? Why not buy it with a discount for Black Friday? So just use the discount code Black Friday with a, with a one instead of an I. And the website is mortismedia.shop. You get 20% off. I hope you like it. It took a long time to make. I've also invited Entropic Society to read a few Skinwalker stories for tonight. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I am a hunter, and I like to hunt boar specifically. Though I have been deer hunting and have been known to get a turkey for Thanksgiving, I predominantly hunt boar. For those of you who don't know, boar are a big problem in the United States. A so can have two litters a year, and it's not uncommon for a litter to consist of ten or more pigs. Given that pigs eat anything and everything, it's not hard to see why the Department of Fish and Wildlife makes it legal to hunt them with almost no restrictions. In my state, it is illegal to hunt most large mammals with night or thermal vision scopes, with the exception of boar and coyote. I've been saving for a year. It's hard to explain to your wife that a scope that costs literally twice as much as the rifle you use is worth investing in. But I did it. I took it to a range and sighted it in. There was an area that was peppered with boar activity that I knew would be the perfect place for a night hunt. It was easily accessible with my truck and easy to find spots that I could set up that overlook a large, easy to navigate clearing. The night started uneventfully, me mostly tinkering with my new toy, cycling through the settings, and I was a little impatient. I spotted multiple deer, but they were out of season, and like I mentioned earlier, my current setup wasn't legal for deer. I moved to another spot I'd seen days earlier that probably wasn't much better than my first, but it gave me something to do and a new angle to look around with my new scope. After an hour or so of glassing the area, it dawned on me. This spot doesn't have much animal activity at all. No rabbits, no owls, the deer that I'd seen were hundreds of yards from where I was. Why was this pocket of land so dead at night but lively by day? I'd set up around 10pm and it was now 2am, and I was starting to think of packing up, maybe setting up a target before I left and take some practice shots. Then I heard a crunch come from the direction I came from before. I panned my scope over and saw the silhouette of a small bear pushing through the bushes. It's important to note that my scope isn't exactly night vision, it's thermal scope. Kind of like a black and white version of what you see in the Predator movies. I adjusted my range and zoomed in a little. I remember jolting a little when I saw that it wasn't really a bear, it was a man. Because he was so low and hunched over, I thought I was looking at a young bear. Is that a game warden? I couldn't believe it. I would have seen the headlights coming up the road where I was perched. And where could he have walked from? I was 30 miles away from anything and on public land. I was about to call out when I adjusted my sights and noticed he was naked. No shoes, no pants or anything, and I remember being disturbed by his movements like a squirrel or something, twitchy and grabbing the foliage, sniffing around and palming the tree. Was that my tree? The one I'd been leaning against earlier. The thought terrified me. Could he smell me? Then he did something that straight up gives me nightmares to this day. He squatted and placed his hands in the dirt between his feet and started to straight up howl like a dog. And I heard it, a voice coming from the direction, a very compelling female voice. Help, I'm lost. There was a long pause, but neither of us moved a muscle. The centre of my sight was trained at the dirt in front of his feet. I couldn't bring myself to aim it directly at another person. It was against everything I'd been taught about firearms. Were they lost? Was this some guy that had gone crazy out there? Why was his voice so feminine? Help! Please, I can't walk! The voice called out. That's when I called BS. Not only could he walk, when I saw him, he was traversing the land with ease for a naked person. So good I mistook him for a bear. That's a trap. The 
confess trying to lure me with a damsel in distress routine. Luckily, the lack of activity before me had caused me to pack up most of my gear. I think I may have left behind a hat and a sitting pad, but I didn't give a crap in that moment. I took my eyes off him for a moment, got back to my pack, and buckled my chest strap on and scrambled for my rifle. To my horror, he was in the exact same position, but his face was staring in my direction, and I can swear I saw a smile in the thermal scope. How the hell had he heard me get up and put my gear on? He must have easily been over 150 yards away. Piss off, I screamed in that direction. He stood upright, and it hit me how tall and skinny he was. Easily six foot and very lean. He took a few long strides in my direction, and I instinctively sent a round sailing above his head into the tree line. He was freaky as hell, but he hadn't really been threatened by me. What would I tell the cops? I was unwilling and I'm ready to shoot someone. He stopped dead in his tracks and hunched down on all fours. The next one will mess you up. Go away. He stayed on all fours, and this time I had my sights trained on the center of him. His eyes were just above the grass, like a large cat. I was trying to stop my trembling, but I knew that my voice had cracked a little on the last warning. I was terrified. The standoff probably only lasted a minute or two, maybe less, but I felt like forever. In an instant, he bolted left towards the tree line opposite the road. So much for not being able to walk. I could barely keep him in my scope, he was moving so quickly. He disappeared into the brush, and I sent another bullet sailing high in his direction. I racked another round and tried to pocket my mag and swapped for a fresh one. But I dropped it and didn't bother looking for it. I was far from my truck and wanted to get out of there. I could hear him in the distance, yelling in this weird sound that could have been a laugh or a cry. I scrambled up the trail and arrived at my truck breathless, tossed my gear into the cab but kept the rifle in the passenger seat and sped off. For the longest time I've told the story from the perspective of having spotted some deranged crackhead living off the land like some kind of caveman. I reported it to the fishing game, but all they did was scold me for hunting at night alone. Never received an update. It wasn't until I shared this story at a camping trip that my nephew told me about wendigos, rakes, and skinwalkers. My story scared the piss out of him because the spot we were camping at was technically the same forest I'd seen him at, just 50 miles east. He was so spooked his mum, my cousin, had to take him home, and she was pissed. I'd gone down the rabbit hole on one of these stories, and I'm not saying what I definitely saw was one of the things I mentioned, but I'm saying that if such a thing exists, I may have dodged quite the bullet that night. Or maybe it was a twerker being Donny Thornbury in the middle of the night. Either way, I thought I'd share. Honestly. Skinwalkers scare me more than anything, like I can't breathe. I'm frozen scared, tears rolling down my face. Backstory. I was homeless two years ago and living with two other homeless teens. As far as being homeless went, we were well off. We had each other and previous survival skills as we came from horrible homes. We befriended another homeless group and they showed us their ragtag camp which, in a way, was kind of magical. It was in the woods, and actually had an actual bed carved from a tree and a tarp as shelter with battery-powered fairy lights inside. My late grandpa was Native American, and that was kind of what got me into urban legends around Native history and such. Anyways, the homeless group we befriended took pity on us and lent us the campsite for a few weeks, and we were able to get work setting up things the way we wanted them. We had two dogs. Pepper, who was severely abused and actually liked homelessness, and Autumn, who was a demon in dog form, who was also abused. Pepper was overly sensitive, cautious, and scared of her own shadow, and Autumn was the complete opposite. We set them under the tarp and a makeshift bed right above our heads, and for a few nights everything was okay. Then, it changed. We didn't feel safe there. We were up late telling stories and I mentioned the skinwalkers and how talking about them attracted them. Halfway into the stories, our dogs go insane. I'd never seen the type of raw fear from either one of the dogs. Pepper was almost unrecognizable. She was so afraid but ready to protect us. We were horrified at first, frozen with anxiety and fear but 
It wore down as soon as we realized how silly we were being. And then, we heard it. Not quite a human and not quite an animal. Nothing will ever scare me as much to this day. I have a bad heart condition and this scare almost killed me. We couldn't move. It was walking around the camp and the only thing protecting us was a cheap plastic tarp and some duct tape. I don't remember much from that night, only woke up to see the guys were still awake. Part of the camp was destroyed. We were too afraid to sleep there again, so it became a storage place. All but one of us made it out of homelessness. A little preface before I get into why I will never go into the woods at night. I've lived in Virginia my whole life and never really had many weird things happen. And due to that, I was never the over superstitious growing up. I tended to stay to myself for the most part, but I did have two close friends throughout high school, Zach and Travis. I've known Zach most of my life, but met Travis during my senior year and we quickly became a close trio. I lived in the suburbs and Travis in the country and on one of the many Civil War battlefield grounds in the area. It was about a 45 minute drive from my house. However, when I met Travis, he was staying at his grandparents' house, which was in the neighborhood next to mine. When we first started hanging out as a trio, we did the usual delinquent act. Smoke weed, drink, go for joy rides down the back roads and stupid stuff. A few months into us hanging out, Travis told me about these really weird screams they would hear in the woods at night behind his house, and I was pretty skeptical and wrote it off as them trying to mess with me. Until one night I went to his house in the country and decided to have a kickback with a bonfire. Now, essentially a kickback is a small party with just a few people. We got all the preparations, good weed, good beer, good music, and started to build the bonfire in his backyard in the tree line where they had a bit of an opening. We got the fire raging, and we were just hanging out at this point, drinking a few beers and about to light up a smoke. It was maybe 9 p.m. at this point when his golden retriever Jack, who was as gentle as they come, was sitting by the fire with us. He was laying on the ground the whole time while we were just telling jokes and stories, when suddenly Jack got up and instantly was in the defensive stance that dogs get when they sense danger or feel threatened, with his ears perked listening for something. All three of us fell silent and looked at him for a few seconds until we heard it. This bone chilling shriek. At first it sounded like a single shriek far off in the distance, but it was traveling closer. It sounded unnatural, distorted, almost like whatever was making it had blood in its lungs. And then, we heard a second one on the other side of us, still off on the distance. It sounds like whatever the hell it was, they were communicating with each other. Zach later said it sounded like a female gorilla was getting murdered with an axe. At this point, the screams were on either side of us, a closing our proximity really fast. They both asked, do you believe us now? Hell, I didn't know what to think. Jack was going crazy at this point and we didn't know what to expect, so we took him inside and fetched one of the shotguns from the safe, but couldn't find the key. We had a pretty big fire out there and we just couldn't leave it burning, so had to go back outside either way. Not be able to find the key to the safe and not wanting to go back outside unarmed, we grabbed the biggest hunting knives we could find and went back outside and sat by the fire. That's when I noticed that it was dead silent, other than the sounds of the fire, to the point where you could feel it. We were in the middle of the woods. Normally there's a lot of background noise from bugs, but this was only the chilling silence that remained and the crackling of the fire. Then a few minutes passed by when we heard footsteps about 10 to 15 feet behind where I was sitting. Whatever was walking behind me was bipedal. It almost sounded like a person walking back and forth. Whatever it was, it must have had very long legs because it didn't sound like a normal person pacing. They were too far apart and slow. We got up and the footsteps came to a halt. We all look at each other terrified and all three of us looked in the direction of the footsteps, where they were coming from. But we didn't see anything but darkness. 
We slowly agreed to put the fire out as quickly as we could, and then we bolted back inside. I felt like there was something watching me through the window that was facing the backyard for most of the night, but I didn't see anything for the rest of the night. Now, a few months later, Travis was back at his grandparents and we decided to meet up at 1am with this guy called Chris to smoke some weed at the outdoor classroom we had at our school, which was a two minute drive from our neighborhoods. So it was a 10 to 15 minute walk since we could cut through some trails in the woods that led to the school. The classroom was basically a few logs in a circle that was in a clearing in the woods next to a field behind the school. Nothing spectacular. With this plan in mind, I snuck out of the house and started to walk there. I had brought my bong with me, and we all met up. We were talking and catching up. The usual A's and packing a bowl. Travis was talking when he stopped mid-sentence and said, The hell is that? A few weeks later, Travis told me he watched this dog walk up to the dumpster, get on its hind legs, and look inside it with ease almost towering over it. Afterwards, it strolled up to the tree line which was roughly 10 feet behind where I was sitting and sat down and began watching us. Travis then started walking towards the field, so I put the bong down and began following him with Chris behind me. The dog very calmly started walking away, staying on the tree line as we walked over. What we saw was this distorted, twisted, dog-shaped thing that had no hair, was pale with whitish-yellow skin, no tail nor ears, and its front legs were completely inverted, but it walked completely normally. It looked as if its whole body was all twisted around. Travis started whistling, which made it stop. It was only about 15 yards at that point away, and it turned to look at us, but didn't move at all, almost like it glitched, or was too fast for us to see it move. Then we saw its face. It almost looked human. A huge, yellow eye that was far too big for its oval head shape. It didn't even look like it had a snout like most dogs do, more like its head contorted its mouth if you can picture that. Travis halted in his tracks a few feet from me and I stopped too. It was maybe 20 seconds before Travis turned and bolted. But right before he did, I felt its gaze lock on me. The feeling I got was that of pure dread. Like everything good in the world just died. And I felt every fiber of my being screaming at me to run and not stop. That's when Travis turned around and ran without hesitation. And I followed suit. Chris was already ahead of us. And we stuck to the trail, looking over the shoulders the whole time. But it didn't seem to follow. We ran all the way back to Travis's grandparents' house, and I stayed there that night. Because in order to get home, I would have had to have passed a long stretch of wood and an open road. And there was no way I was going to do that. Not long after, I was kicked out of my adopted parents' house because I wasn't the best kid growing up, and moved in with my biological mum for a year and a half. I hadn't seen Travis for the majority of that time I lived with her. I moved back with my adopted family due to personal reasons, and that week came back. I met up with Travis and went out to his house to spend the night and catch up. It was a normal night as far as hanging out, playing video games, talking about the universe, why it existed, and we decided to go back out onto the porch and smoke at around 11. Travis got into the pool, which was connected to the porch, and I just sat there with my feet dipped in. As we were talking, we both noticed this voice off in the distance, but it sounded close. We couldn't make out what they were saying, but it sounded like a young girl. Now, Travis had an 11-year-old sister at the time, but she was inside upstairs asleep, and it was midnight now. We wrote it off. 20 minutes later, Travis saw a bright light in the sky, and I looked to my left and saw what he was pointing at for a few moments. It looked like an orb of pure light and then it vanished into nothing, like someone had hit the switch on it. We fell silent and I got a really odd feeling that I tried to brush off but couldn't shake. That's when Travis asked me to get him some dry shorts off the railing, and I obliged. The railing where they were was facing the woods, and we'd had these bonfires years ago, and something told me to look up, and I did so. 
that's when I saw the dog thing from before. I was frozen in place, pure and complete terror. What I saw looking at me was this humanoid creature that must have been eight to nine feet tall. Thin, extremely thin actually, gangly, white, half its body behind a tree, hands pressed against it, and it was just staring, smiling at me. It was wrong. It had no nose, no ears, an oddly shaped head, and the most terrifying thing was the first thing I noticed. It's pale and lifeless eyes. They had the same exact eyes as the dog that we saw at the school. To paint a picture, its body looked like a slender man mixed with the monster from Stranger Things with a humanoid face. I looked at this thing for what felt like an hour, but in reality, it couldn't have been more than 10 seconds. I turned my head quickly to Travis's direction and yelled for him to come. But when I looked back, of course, it was gone and we stood there waiting and listening to see if it may return or if we would hear something else. That is until Travis said, what the actual hell? And I asked him what happened. He said that he just heard his mom say, Travis, come here. His mom was upstairs asleep and had been so for a while. That's when I told him to take me home because I was not about to deal with whatever the hell that thing was. The next day I told Zach about it and we went to Travis's to discuss it further. We went over to where I saw the thing, and there was a very strange looking claw mark in the tree, like it had rubbed its claw or nail back and forth over the bark. We looked around some more and noticed that there was a trail of indents on the ground, like something had hit the ground so fast it barely left a mark, leading away from the tree, and it led deep into the woods. So it must have been real, I thought to myself. There were a lot of strange things that happened when I was at Travis's house throughout the years, but after seeing that thing, I was done. Something happened between Travis and I, and we no longer talk. And honestly, I don't really mind, because I only had weird experiences when I was near him. I don't know what was stalking us, but I think it was a skinwalker, from what I understand. I can't be sure, but if anyone has had a similar experience or has any idea of what the hell was smiling at me, please let me know because the face haunts my mind to this day. I've actually seen something of the Antler Man twice in my life while driving late at night through the back roads while on road trips, meaning I've actually got a good look two times standing up on two legs. First one was passing through Ohio in 2015. The second was in Maine in 2017. There might have been a third occasion while heading through New York, a bit east of Buffalo, heading towards the Canadian border in 2018, but it was only a silhouette of something running through the trees alongside the highway I was on. I was the only car on the road driving through that night. It actually managed to keep up with me, side by side running through and behind the trees, mind you, at 60 or 70 miles an hour. I took out my gun, opened the passenger window, and shot off four rounds, and just booked it up to 100 miles an hour, and didn't let up for over a good half hour. I have a radar detector, but even if there was a trooper setting off on pulling me over, that night I would not have stopped. Don't care if you believe me or not, just know that there are things out there that the government has special departments made just to conceal, to cover up, or to shut people up to make sure no one exposes things that go bump in the night to the general public. And it's not just skinwalkers or skinnies or whatever you want to call them out there. If those of you that still believe that these nasty things are just a load of crap or that Bigfoot is just a joke, gear up and go hike into the deep forest of the North America for a full seven days and seven nights. Bring a good weapon. And if you manage to come back in one piece and still alive and sane, then God seems to favor you. When I was younger, I went to a summer camp on Wabaman Lake in Alberta, Canada. Anyway, when I got older, there was a separate, few small cabins for the older kids, up 127 steps. I know that because they made us count. At the top to the right, there are trails to the other sites, and to the left are the cabins. Three youth cabins 
on one side of the clearing and the other is one staff cabin. All the cabins are on stilts. There are three bunks laid widthwise to the left when you go through the door and two laid lengthwise on the right with approximately two feet between them all. The side and back windows were between the bottom and top bunk, but closer to the top. However, the top of these windows were still nine to 10 feet off the ground with the stilts on the bottom of the cabins. Also, there were crappy curtains that didn't cover the full windows. Anyway, I was on the first bunk on the left side with a full view of all the windows and we set up and leave for day one. When we come back to pack up for the night, we all hop in bed and mess around like all 13 year olds do. And then after all of that, before we decide to sleep, I have my flashlight pointed to the left of my cabin mate's head, which was closest to the right side window. That's when I notice at the top window between the gap, where the curtain doesn't cover the window, there is just something white reflecting back. I have my flashlight pointed to the left of my cabin mate's head, which was closest to the right side window, foot to the front of the cabin, and we talk for a bit. When I notice at the top of the window between the gap, where the curtain doesn't cover the window, there is just something white reflecting back at me, and in my head, I don't really pick up that it's weird. Then I turn my eyes to it, and before I can focus on what it was, it darts out the window and away from the cabin. And I just feel this primal sense of dread overwhelm me, and I go, terrified, like any 13 year old does. Before I can calm down, my other cabin mate sees something on the top left corner of the back window and starts losing it as well. When we calm down and people ask what we saw, we both describe the same thing. Something white that moved out of the way as we saw it and scared us beyond belief for no reason. What I don't understand is how it got there as the top of the window was at least nine to 10 feet tall. On the second night, some other boys who thought we were just messing with them convinced us to go outside that night with them so we can look around to see if we can find it, which completely terrified me and the other guy. We were looking with our flashlights about 60 feet down a trail near the cabin, when behind a tree maybe 150 feet away from myself and three of my cabin mates, we see an extremely pale lanky figure with what looked like antlers stride left and diagonally away from us very quickly and in absolute silence. It had no visible hair, and all four of us ran as quickly as our legs could carry us back to the cabin. And once everyone was in, we locked the door and jumped in bed while losing our minds. A few of us were crying, and a counsellor had to come in and check on us and ask why we were being so damn loud. On the fourth night, we thought we heard some screaming in the woods, about a half hour after myself, and the guy in the bunk beside me and on the left, in the right side of the window, saw it at the same time. Nobody moved or went to check. Though we did hear our counsellor leave his cabin and look around for us with his flashlight for two minutes before he came in and he noticed that we were all inside and awake. The speed and the way of his face from the anger and terror was almost instant and he told us to lock the doors before sprinting to his cabin and doing the same. The next morning we noticed scratch marks on the doors of our cabins, which was weird because I didn't sleep for longer than maybe two hours that night. Does it sound like anything you guys have ever heard of? I'm trying to find an explanation for what it could have been. I'm in Alberta, so I don't know what kind of cryptids live here. And also because when I saw it, it had arms. Any information would be greatly appreciated. I think I encountered a skinwalker once as a kid. Because years ago, when I was like 10 or something, I saw my friend. I'll call her Jay, in this weird position that it didn't look possible to be in. The post Jay was in looked like a sideways cartwheel but paused then it looked like it was forming into a deer because the head kind of morphed into a deer head so I just screamed and ran away as any child would. Later I found Jay with my brother and another friend. I'm not sure if my eyes and brain were just making things spooky because I was in the dark but I'm not sure to be honest. I do know that I'll never be walking alone after that experience. I didn't want to see that happen again. I did feel watched after that though. Quick little story time of a skinwalker type thing. 
so me and my older sister were home alone as our parents were out somewhere. We had two dogs at the time, a mini Aussie named Fancy and an Aussie blue healer named Jasper. Now, where we lived wasn't in the woods, but rather somewhat out of town in a small neighborhood. We let out our dogs in a small fence area my dad made for them. There was a way in if you knew how it was put together. A tall teen or a man could climb over the fence. We let them in after a few minutes because Jasper was barking, which we had no neighbors facing the fence, so we thought it was just a cat. Fancy and Jasper come in, but Fancy seems off. She would normally go lay down in her kennel or go to the food bowl. She was shaking and hacking a lot. Then there was more scratching at the door, and my sister opened it this time. Fancy came in and did the actual thing she did, and the one from before disappeared. Later that night, I had a long scratch down my back from somewhere and none of my dogs did it. Going back a couple months before when school was going, I went to the bus stop in the morning around 6.30. It was still pitch black out. I had seen this huge shadow that looked like a humanoid on all fours, but with the face of an animal. The legs were weirdly bent and the back arced. I knew this wasn't a dog because when a car drove by, it seemed as if it was walking towards me. But as soon as the light hit it, it ran. As somebody who owns property right by Walker Ranch, I can confirm that there's something going on up there. I have a story of my own when I was about 13. We were camping up at my property and me and my two brothers decided to go hike. Keep in mind it was at sunset and that's when things start getting weird up there. Anyways, we started hiking and eventually reached the top of the mountain slash hill we were on that was relatively small. We stayed up there for a while and explored rock formations, caught lizards and tracked animals. We were having a good time, but it was getting dark pretty quickly, so we decided to head back down. My younger brother was in front, about 30 feet in front of me. My older brother was a little bit behind him, and I was at the back, still taking in the scenery. This whole time I had been hearing coyotes howling and twigs snapping, but thought nothing of it because it was normal. But I got this weird feeling, like someone was watching us. I picked up the pace and told them to go a little faster, just in case. I felt my stomach flip and I heard a growl from an animal that didn't sound right. It was almost like a gurgle. I didn't take my time and I told them to run. The whole time I heard branches snapping behind me. We made it down safe and didn't see anything but the encounter still has its hold on me. I am way more careful and respectful of that land now. My personal experience, when I was younger, I went camping with my friends. There were three of us, and we were all teens. We were walking to our campsite at like 4pm, and it was starting to get dark. We heard something large nearby. My friend pulled out his father's gun, thinking it could be a wild pig. We all heard a growl. It was loud, and it sounded like it was coming from behind us. We just stood there, not daring to look behind us. I screamed to run and we all ran back towards where we entered the forest. We got home safely. We still don't know for sure what it was. I have two very scary stories. This all happened when we moved to a small neighborhood in Arizona where everyone had about an acre of land. So we had just moved in and me and my two sisters were sharing a room for the night. And in the middle of the night... We hear growling outside our window, not like any other growling we've heard. So at this point we are terrified and we are trying to comprehend what this animal is. And then all we hear is screaming. We don't know from what, but it's so distinct. It has been five years since that incident and we've now moved to a different state. But I will never forget that moment when the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I should also say that we weren't city kids. We were used to wild animals like coyotes in our neighborhood. Now here is a more recent one, in the same house. This was when our house was for sale. The rest of our family was out of state checking out the other house and I was staying there because I had to take care of my horse. That day my sister forgot to pick me up. So we had no curtains at the living room window and I am in my old bedroom. I start hearing knocking and a little growl. 
I am thinking about my horse that it is possibly exposed to this creature, and I am also thinking, what growls and is at human level? I eventually fell asleep and in the morning my precious horse was okay. I found that the grass was matted down like something was pacing around, but that was about seven months ago. I was able to bring my horse across the state and I miss Arizona. I'm also Christian and for my friends from our old church believe it was a skinwalker. By the way, becoming a skinwalker you basically have to kill certain people as a sacrifice to the devil which is believable. Stay safe and God bless. I know that this isn't important but here is my story with skinwalkers or my experience. Summer 2020, bored in my house, excited to go out in the woods with my friends I hadn't seen in a long time. We got there at least 4 p.m. My friend smokes cigarettes while I just walk around till we hear a faint sound. It was footsteps. My friend was alert, but my other friend, Alex, said it was, quote, nothing serious, probably a random bug or something falling. The time turned around 8, the sun went down, and then... They were back. My friend Alex was now fearful, believing me. He made a joke about it being a skinwalker, and when he said that, it started sprinting. All three of us bolted to the exit of the forest while Alex tried grabbing a hatchet out of his bag, inherently causing his bag to fall, but ran away instead of trying to pick it up. We were out of the forest when we realized that it was no human. We heard this ear-piercing shriek after we escaped that thing. I live in suburban New York. Nothing like this has ever happened. My friends and I moved near the city in a suburban area. It's safe to say that I'm never going back into the woods after this video. This recently happened to me. It was 12 a.m. and my mother was going outside for a smoke. And as she is smoking, she is talking to my auntie. And as she was talking, she heard a human scream, then turned into coyote giggles. She explained to me that she told me and my brother to go downstairs and lock the windows and the doors downstairs. As we did, I feared that we would see that thing standing outside, waiting for us. But we did not, thankfully, and we barely got any sleep that night. All we thought about was that thing that screamed in the woods. It's currently the next day and I'm writing this thing. If anyone has any idea what it was or anything, please tell me, as I am freaking out. I have a memory of when I was younger, and I was going to my father's house down the road that only had one side street full of houses, and when passing by one of the houses, I saw some type of giant dog horse thing, but only barely. We stopped going down that road for some reason and one day me and my brothers and my brother's wife went fishing and told ghost stories. I'm not a huge fan of them. I told them the same thing I just told you and they said it could have been a skinwalker. If it was, I'm happy I made it without it seeing me. I had a cabin on old Indian land. Some pretty terrible things had happened in the creek nearby there had a little girl get murdered, or rather, brutally missing. Only gruesome traces left, many, many years ago. The Indians to this day refuse to travel that part of the land and you can hear her footsteps and brush moving on windless nights. Almost as if wars were fought hundreds of years ago were being reenacted. One time, my stepmother recollected a night she was there when it was foggy. She said she heard a scream pierce the night and a terrible smell of death like those off a fresh kill from a successful hunt. Nobody ever traveled alone at dark and I remember the door to the cabin having the most overly bulky deadbolt and one of the other sliding ones to boot. Thankfully we finally sold it out of the family about 8 years ago. Now that I think of it, I remember this one time seeing a skinwalker. One time I was invited to my friend's sleepover party, so everyone who was staying the night was me, Mary, and Hannah who was the birthday girl. So this was about the time when clowns were going around. I was good at art so they wanted me to play a prank on Hannah's cousin who lived right down the road. When we were done, 
we started to walk along the road to their cousin's house. Who was all there was Mary, Hannah, me, and Hannah's older brother. When we were walking, I thought I heard a grumble clicking noise behind us. So when I turned around, I see this huge animal staring at us. It was super dark out, so I couldn't make the face out, but I could see the glowing, glimmering eyes. It looked too huge to be a coyote or a mountain lion, so I did something not super smart now that I think about it. I grabbed the older brother's knife from his waist and had everyone back up behind me. The creature started to walk towards us, and I walked like if you're going to try to have your shoulder blades pop out. But when I was backing everyone up, I held the knife to my chest, ready to jump at it. When I was backing them up, a huge growl-like roar came out of my throat, scaring not only me, but the rest of us too, including the creature. The creature just turned around and ran back into the woods. When we had the adults come pick us up, I saw the glimmering, glowing eyes in the forest, but they were way above the ground now. Lesson learned. Do not go prank people near the woods. I don't know who wants to hear this, or who needs to hear this, who just wants to share my story, but when I was about seven, my family had just moved into an apartment right in front of the forest. The forest spread for miles and miles with no stop, but it just so happened that my window faced the forest. One night, about a week after we moved in, my bed was placed under the window because I got hot when I slept and needed the cold air from the window. When I was getting ready for bed, I was looking out my window at the stars, and then I saw it. A goat-like creature standing on two legs, just standing there. Its cream-colored teeth were out and glossy, just staring at me. I looked at my sister and asked her to come over to see what I was seeing, but when she got there, the thing had gone. She left my bed and I went out of my room while my back was turned. I heard an ear-piercing scream followed by knocks on my window. I screamed and ran to my mom's room. She asked what was wrong and when I told her she grabbed me and my sister and took us to her room and told my stepdad to get his gun. As we waited in our tiny apartment, we heard it. Another loud scream and a stomp on the roof. I lived on the top floor. We left that night leaving everything in the house and didn't come back till a couple weeks later. The thing that I saw was a skinwalker and I was lucky I wasn't on the balcony and that I was inside my room that my mom listened to me, and that my mom not only believed me, but she knew what I saw. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening. These stories were great. I love Skinwalker stories. If you like them too, you know, feel free to leave me a like or a comment down below. And thank you all so much for being here. It really does mean the world to me that you watch my content. Thank you. You are amazing. Um... I've actually got a few more Skinwalker stories, so maybe I'll be able to do another one at some point soon. That verse story, damn, was so good. Why not check out our collaborators' channel, Entropic Society, link on screen now, or in the description if you would prefer. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.